Hey everyone, welcome to the fourth and final video for section 2.3 talking about mathematical modeling. So in this video we're going to look at chemical reactions and sort of how reaction rates and that kind of thing come together as another application of mathematical modeling. So this is going to be a very, very simplified version of it, but it's something to at least think about and give you another application that wasn't in the textbook to begin with. So let's go ahead and jump on into that. So what we're talking about here is modeling chemical reactions. So what we're looking at here is say we have a reaction where you have a compound A, we're just going to use generic letters here, I, nothing specific is coming out of this, that just breaks down spontaneously to make two things B and C. So A, just while sitting on its own, will just decompose into B and C. It's called a decomposition reaction. Now, in the most simple of circumstances, you would assume that the rate at which the reaction proceeds is proportional to the amount of A present in the mixture. Right, so if there's more A, there's more reaction. And so if the rate of reaction is proportional to amount of A, then what you would get for a model for that is something like the change in A over time is negative rate constant times the amount of A. And we're assuming here that our rate constant K is positive just by convenience sake. So since A is being removed by this reaction, it's going to have a negative sign on it. So the change in A is just minus K times A. Negative rate constant times the amount of A. And that's in the simplest model possible to make that happen. Let's look at a few other reactions. So say we have a reaction where you have A and B combine to make C. Now say you start with, with A naught of A and B naught of B. So you start with some amount of A and B in a mixture and then this reaction is going to go forward. Well now again in a simplest model you'd assume that the reaction is going to go based on how many times A and B collide with each other. So the rate of reaction is proportional to A times B because A times B indicates how often A and B are going to collide and come into contact. So that would mean something like the change of C, because we care about C here for our compound, the amount of C being made over time is some constant times A times B. So there's a simple combination reaction there, A and B combining to make C, and we get something like this. Now A and B, we could also write out more specifically that involves C. Well, so how much A is there in the tank at any time? Well, the amount of A is just going to be the initial amount minus however much C there has been made, because 1A makes 1C. So if I've lost A, I've gained C, so I can write A in terms of A naught and C, and similarly with B. Now this guy's harder, this guy's nonlinear in C, right? There's a C squared term that's going to pop out of this. So this is a harder one to solve, but you can write a model for it fairly easily and then use other methods. You can use methods we'll talk about later to get solutions for that. Similarly, if I have a reaction where two A's are combining, to form a B, you would expect the rate to be proportional to A squared, and so you get something like dA dt equals minus Ka squared. Right, so if you want to look at very, very simple models for reactions, you can look at things like this. However, these are actually very, very simple reactions, and there are things that are much more complicated. The actual um, rate law, which is what these things are called, the actual model or rate law, which is a word used in chemical chemistry contexts, um, depends on the mechanism of the reaction. Let me explain what I mean real quick. So say we go back up to this top one, this decomposition reaction, where A breaks up to form B and C. If A was just breaking down on its own, you would get something like minus Ka, and that would make sense. 
but what if you need two A's to collide and then they both split into two B's and two C's? Right? In that case, you need A's to collide to make it happen. So you can't just have A on its own, it has to hit another A and they have to bump into it and make it happen. So therefore your rate would go like A squared instead of like A. So the actual rate law you get is going to depend on the mechanism, and that's where stuff in a lot of chemistry comes into play to sort of help you figure out what the mechanism should be and what the rate law should be at the end of the day. But this stuff is pretty complicated. You can get fairly simple ones and get nice and easy models out of it. So that's why I wanted to talk about it here. All right, that's all I was planning to say for this video. Um, we'll do a lot of examples. And I think there's actually a problem in the book that talks about this vaguely, but not as much detail as I just went through here. So we'll talk about this on Monday. Um, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you guys in class.